In this video, we're going to work some optimization example problems. I'm going to try and get through seven problems in one video, but if, if, if it starts to drag too long, I might separate this into two videos. Okay, first problem. What is the maximum vertical distance between the line y is equal to x plus 2 and the parabola y is equal to x squared for x is between minus 1 and 2? Okay, so first step is, you know, you just want to read the problem and, and do your best to understand exactly what it's asking. And then look for what's the variable to be optimized. So the variable to be optimized is the distance between this line and this parabola, the vertical distance. Okay, so let's draw a diagram to, to, so we can see what exactly we're, we're looking for. So, okay, we're looking for the vertical distance between this line and this parabola. So let's plot that line and parabola. Okay, the line y is equal to x plus 2 when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2. So we're here. And then the slope is 1. So Okay. Something like that. Okay, now the parabola y is equal to x squared. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. When x is equal to minus 1, y is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. Which would be, that's this point here. Okay, when x is equal to minus 2, y is equal to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. All right, so... Okay, something like that. Now, the domain that we're working with, we're just analyzing from x is equal to minus 1 to 2. So let's, so let's highlight that. Okay, so th this is the region. This is the, the portion of the line and the parabola that we're analyzing. And we're looking for the maximum vertical distance between the line and the parabola anywhere along this interval. Okay, so we want to write this in general. You know, I could guess and maybe that distance is right here at x is equal to zero or maybe it's here. I don't know, but so I'll put this in blue here. This is just in general. This is D. What is th this is the we're trying to this is the variable we're trying to optimize. D can go anywhere along from minus one to two from any x value from minus one to two which one's going to from anywhere from minus one to two which which is going to result in the smallest d we're trying to that's this is the variable we're trying to minimize okay so so that so now we can see the variable we're trying to minimize that's that the first step is you read the problem understand the problem draw a diagram and, and identify the variable you're trying to optimize in, in this case we're trying to minimize d next we want to add other variables to the diagram, and then we're going to make a, an equation, some function of d as with respect to the, to the other variables. So what we'll do is, let's call this point here x line y line, and then this point here is x parabola y parabola, okay? And so with that, we can write an equation for this d, and it's just the vertical distance between the line and the parabola. So this is just going to be y line minus y parabola. That's it. It's, it's just asking for the vertical distance, not the absolute distance. So if it was asking for the absolute distance, we would draw a, a line like that. It's just asking for the vertical distance. So it's just a difference in the, in the y values, okay? So now we've got this d as a function of the input variables. Okay, but the next step is we can always go back to the original word problem and find a way to that we can relate the input variables so we can get D as a function of a single input variable. All right. And we're going to do that because we know the equation of the line and of the parabola. Okay. So let's, for all the information we have, how is, 
we, we can relate XL and YL and XP and YP because why? We know that we know YL is what? It's XL squared. We know that YP or no, YL is not XL squared. YL is XL plus 2. We know that YP is XP squared. Okay, so that's fine. So now we, we if we substitute this in, we get, so YL is XL plus 2, and then YP is XP squared, but we still got two variables here. So, so what, what are we, what, what's, what's missing? Well, the, if you notice based on the diagram, this D here, for the D, the X's are going to be the same, right? So XL is equal to XP. So we can just, let's just use, let's substitute, let's substitute in XP. So XL is equal to XP. There we go. So now we've got D as a function of X of a single input variable. And so what it is is minus X P squared plus X P plus two. Okay. But the last step is you need, you, you've got your function as a, you're the variable to be optimized as, as a function of a single variable, but you need to put the domain. What's the domain for XP? It's minus one to two. The closed interval from minus one to two. Okay. So we've gotten through the first stage of an optimization problem. We've got the, the variable to be optimized as a function of a single input variable and the corresponding domain of that input variable. Now we just need to find the, the absolute max or min, whatever we're looking for. Here it's going to be the min, no, the max, um, over the interval. So this is a closed interval. This is a continuous function, so we can use the closed interval method. All we do is we evaluate the function at the endpoints. All right, so this would be minus 1 squared. So, okay, minus... Okay, zero, and then d of d of two is going to be zero as well, right? Because you can see the distance between at the endpoints is zero, All right? So that would be minus four plus two plus two. All right, then we get okay. So but so we got the, the, the endpoints. Now we find the critical points with respect to the first derivative. So all right, set this equal to zero, and so 2xp is equal to 1, xp is equal to 1 half. Okay, and now evaluate this at the critical points, so d of 1 half is equal to minus 1 fourth plus 1 half plus 2, so 1 fourth plus 2, 2 plus 1 fourth is 2.25, which is 9 fourths, all right? And we know that's, this is, the, the based on the closed interval method, this is the only critical point, and so since 9 fourth is larger than 0 and 0, that's the maximum value, the absolute max over this interval of D. So at X is equal to 1 half, D is equal to 9 fourths. Okay, a farmer wants to fence in a rectangular plot of land adjacent to the north wall of his barn. No fencing is needed along the barn, and the fencing along the west side of the plot is shared with a neighbor who will split the cost of that portion of the fence. If the fencing costs $20 per linear foot to install and the farmer is not willing to spend more than $5,000, find the dimensions for the plot that would enclose the most area. All right, so you read the problem. The way you solve optimization problems, read the problem, obviously trying to understand exactly what it's asking. But 
you're, you're at, at the first thing you're looking for is what's the variable that we're trying to optimize. And we're trying to optimize the area. Okay, so we're going to find the area of this rectangular plot of land. And we want to get the largest area based on all the constraints. Okay, so next step is you, you, you draw a diagram. Or if you can't draw a diagram, you just list out the main points. You're just trying to get a picture for what's going on. So, okay, you've got the, the side of the fence adjacent to the north wall of his barn. So adjacent to the north wall. So that would be like... This is the north wall of the barn. So that's the south side of the plot of land. That's what they're saying. Okay. And then, so no fencing there. And then on the west side, it's shared with a neighbor that's going to split the cost. All right. And so what I'll do there is do something like, The neighbor's going to split the cost there. That's the dotted line on the west side. Okay, and then the rest is just normal. So I'll just leave it as a, a solid line. All right. Okay. And then you've got the, that's the variable to be optimized is the air, this area. Okay. So now we want to add... So we can see what the variable, we can see what the problem is stating, right? This isn't, there's no fencing here. This fencing is, is his fencing, but the cost is split. And they we're, Matt, we're optimizing the area. So, but let's add other variables. And so it's a rectangular plot of land. So it's rectangular. So we'll say that this, this is dimension is X and this dimension is Y. They could be, these are two different values. It's rectangular, but that's it. This dimension is going to be Y, and this dimension is going to be X. It's rectangular, okay? And so, so there's the diagram. Now let's write the variable to be optimized as a function of the all of, just as a function of any of all of the variables. So X times Y. But we need to get this as a function of a single input variable. And to do that, we can we come back to the, the word problem and find a way that we can relate the input variables. How can we do that? Well, okay, if we read word problems, so the so the, the total length of fencing is going to be what? So let's say the length, we'll say L. L is for the length of fencing. is going to be 2x plus y. All right? That's the total length of, fin of fencing. Okay. The fencing cost $20 per linear foot to install, and the farmer is not willing to spend more than $5,000. All right, so the, the cost, we'll call that the, the price, the price of the fencing, okay? What's the price of the fencing? The price of the fencing is, so it would be 20 times Y plus 20 times X, price of the fencing for the um for the neighbor or not for the neighbor for the for the farmer okay and then plus 10 times x you see 20 dollars per foot 20 dollars per foot then he splits the cost 10 dollars per foot so p is it would be okay 30 x plus 20 y and Okay, this is the call, the price for the farmer, and the farmer is not willing to spend more than five thousand dollars. So, thirty x plus twenty y is equal to five thousand. Divide both sides by ten. You get three x plus two y is equal to five hundred. Okay. And and we're gonna put we put five thousand because we're assuming that the farmer is gonna spend the most money possible to get the largest area possible. You'll spend $5,000. So, so how much with $5,000, what's the, what's the, for 5,000, if he's going to spend $5,000, then what dimensions should he use that would give the largest area? And so this ended up not coming into play. We've got, here, here's the equation here. So let's solve for, let's say, 
why so okay now we can substitute in okay so a as a function of x is equal to minus 3 half x squared plus 250x. All right. Now, what is there's a function of a, the, the function for of a single variable. What's the domain of this though? The domain is so x could technically be equal to zero, and then what's the upper limit on x? Well, okay. Y can't be can be can, y can't be negative, right? It could be zero, but not negative. So if we look here, what, what would make three halves x equal to two fifty? Okay, so two fifty divided by three halves, five hundred over three. Okay, so if x is equal to 500 over 3, y is equal to 0. And if you go any above that, y is negative. So 500 over 3. There we go. There is the, here is the function of the variable to be optimized as a function of a single variable and the corresponding domain. It's a Once again, it's a closed interval. Okay, so now we just need to find the absolute max of this function of over this interval. And we can use the closed interval method. So let's evaluate the function at the endpoints. So a of zero is going to be equal to zero. And then a of 500 over three, that would mean y is equal to zero. So this should also be zero as well. Let's see here. So minus three halves times Okay, so we get the equation stored as e, so e with x equal to is also zero. Okay. Okay, so that's the endpoints. Now let's find the critical points with respect to the first derivative. Minus three x plus two fifty. So x is equal to two fifty divided by three. 83.3, so okay. Okay, so that's the x value that, co that creates the largest area. So it's this many feet. All right, so what's the corresponding y value? That's 3 halves times 250 divided by 3. So it's 250 divided by 2, that's 125. 250 minus 125 is 125 okay and so the area in that case is 250 divided by 3 times 125 which is 10,417 square feet okay there you go there's the dimensions and there's the corresponding area. Okay, a right circular cylinder is inscribed in a sphere of radius r. Find the largest possible surface area of such a cylinder. All right, so the largest possible surface area of the cylinder is what we're trying to optimize. A right circular cylinder is inscribed in a sphere. Let me see if I can Google this image. Okay, there we go. So I just Googled this, checked Google Images. Perfect. It's a right circular cylinder inscribed in a sphere. And, well, okay, this radius is, it gives us R, lowercase r. Well, okay, so the sphere is radius R. And then we'll change this to... RC. 
Okay, the radius of the cylinder, the radius of the sphere. Well, those are the same thing, actually. Is that the case? I guess it is, right? The radius of the cylinder is going to be, you know, if you if you cu if you cut at a plane, take a, a plane horizontal plane like this. If this is vertical, take a horizontal plane and you cut anywhere in the sphere, you're going to get a circle. And that would be, if, if, it, if this is inscribed, that circle would be all along the surface of the sphere. So, in that case, this is going to be R as well, right? And then you can't really see this. This is the height of the cylinder. Right, this here, this circle, like like a circle just away from the endpoints, the, the, the heads of the cylinder, this is not on the cylinder. Like, this circle of the cylinder is not on the surface of the sphere. Only the endpoints, only the top and the bottom would be if it's inscribed. Oh, wait, no, I take, no, okay, no, that's, but these, these are not the same, though. Because this is not the, this is not the radius of the cylinder, or, or this is not the radius of the circle, of the, of the sphere. This is the radius, this is the radius of the sphere. This is just the radius of a circle if you, if you cut the sphere at, at this height. So, okay, these are different. Yes, this cylinder head is on the surface of the sphere, but this is not the radius of the, the sphere. All right, so we're, we're trying to optimize the surface area of the cylinder. Okay, so we've got our diagram here. What's the surface area of the cylinder? This is going to be 2 pi rc squared, because you got two heads here, and then, well, no, adding to that, would be 2 pi r c h. So there you go. There is the a function for the surface area of the cylinder. Now we just need to relate these variables so we can get a as a function of a single variable. And we come back to the word problem to do that, but really we're going to need to use geometry here and figure out how we can relate all these variables. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, all right, if we look here, so... If we consider this the origin, and then this the, so, so, so this is like, okay, this, this is like an xy plane, right? Right at the middle of this sphere, xy. You can see that we can, based on the height, we could come up, we, we, can, we can relate r, c, and h. And how can we do that? Because we know that this, so the xy plane, the, this xy plane here, cuts the sphere, it's cuts the sphere right down the center, right? And so if you project the, the sphere that's in the xy plane, if we just considered the cut, the cut from the xy plane of the sphere, we're going to get this. What is that? That's, this is the equation for a circle in 2D with radius r, all right? So, so like if you imagine this is x, this is y, like imagine, okay, this is x, this is y. Let's just, let's just think about that for a second. So what's the equation for this here? That's going to be the, a, a circle. It's a circle centered at the origin. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. But what, so, so what is this x and y? That's this point here, okay? It, it could be any point, any point where the, where the cylinder is inscribed. What is, what's, so if, we, if we take a closer look, the, the, what are these coordinates to get to X and Y? Like this is X and Y. What are, the, what are these coordinates? It, the X is RC and the Y is H, right? The, the coordinates for this point, the X is RC and the Y is H. So, okay, let's substitute that in. RC squared plus H squared is equal to r squared, all right? Now, r is a constant here, so that we don't, we're not, r is not a variable, r is a constant, it's gonna be part of the final answer. But, okay, we're, we're now we can, but we can relate, now we've got something where we can solve for r, c, or h as a function of the other. So, let's just pick one, let's solve for r, c. So, r, c squared is equal to r squared minus h squared. Well, actually, let's solve for, it looks like it would be easier to solve for h. So, h squared is equal to r squared minus 
R C squared because there's just one H here. Okay, so H, we can take the square root of both sides, but we're not going to do plus or minus because we, it, it's, we know it's just this top half here. Right, we're not going. If we put plus or minus, the idea is for any given RC, we could go above or below. But we're not looking at it that way. We're not considering negative H's. And actually, no, I take it back. Wait a minute, I messed this up here. This is not. This is RC H divided by two. Right, the H is the full height of the cylinder, so this is R C H H over two. Okay, so in that case, okay. All right, multiply all this entire equation by four, so four. RC squared plus H squared. So H squared is equal to 4 R squared minus 4 RC squared. And we can actually factor out the 4. Okay. So H is equal to 2. There we go. So there is H. Now let's, if we plug that in here, we get A as a function of, it's going to be RC, is 2 pi RC squared plus 2 pi RC times 2 square root of r squared minus rc squared. Okay, so a r c is equal to 2 pi r c squared plus 4 pi r c square root of r squared minus... There we go. Now, what is the domain of r c? RC can go from R to zero. So RC, there's the domain of RC. So there we go. We've got the variable we're trying to optimize as a function of a single input variable and the corresponding domain of that variable. Now we just need to find the, the largest value of A on this interval. And this is going to be, this is a continuous function over, the, over this interval. And it's a closed interval. Okay, so we can use the closed interval method. Now let's just use our calculator to make this quicker. This isn't a lesson on using the closed interval method, but so 2 pi times x squared plus 4 pi times x times square root of r squared minus x squared. Store that as e. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate a at 0 and a at r. And what do we expect this to be? If, the, if rc is equal to r then we're here. So we've got a flat cylinder. So we expect these both these areas to be zero. Okay. So E with... Or no, that, that's not right. We expect both these areas to be pi R squared. Just, just the area of this circle here. Well, no, okay. If R is... If RC is equal to R, we expect to get pi, the area is going to be, I guess maybe, or do it be 2 pi r squared? Because it's like you've got the top and the bottom. Yeah. So with x is equal to r, yeah, 2 pi r squared. Okay. And then with a, if, 
RC is equal to zero, we're up here. And what does that mean? Let's see. I'm, I'm really not sure. Zero. So why is that surface area zero? Well, because you don't even have a cylinder. RC is zero. Okay, so. All right, next we find the critical points. So take the derivative with respect to x of the equation and then solve for when this is equal to 0 for x. Okay, so x is equal to, this is, so 50, all right, well, okay, if we simplify this, what would it get, if, we, if these two are equivalent to r times the square root of 5 minus root 5 over 10, so or x is equal to r squared of 5 plus root 5 over 10. And both of these are going to be positive x's, so that's what that, that's these two answers. If, if you it, it, these look different, but it's the just just you can pause the video and take a look. These are, that's the same thing. This these two answers here are the same as what these two answers are saying. All right. So now what we want to do is we'll call this x1 and this x2. Well, let's call these let's call this RC1 and RC2. Okay, so so we've evaluated the function at the endpoints. Now let's evaluate it at these critical points. All right, so we've got, there's the surface area function. All right, so now we want to do E with X is equal to R times square root 5 minus root 5. Divided by 10. Okay, and put this, all of this. Okay. All right. And it, it gives this absolute value of R, but since the domain R is, is greater than zero, we can just remove this absolute value here and just put R and get that. All right, now let's do the same thing, but with the other critical point. And then similar idea, or same idea, that this we can just replace with R. All right, so we've got those two values there. Which one is the largest? Because that's what we're looking for. We're trying to maximize the surface area. So it's just the difference between the 3 root 5 over 5 plus 1 and root 5 plus 1. So 3 root 5 over 5, that's 3 fifths of root 5. And this is just root 5. So this is going to be the largest. And that was associated with 5 plus root 5. Okay, so the, the absolute max is at an RC equal to r times square root of 5 plus root 5 over 10, and then you could solve for h here. I guess let's go ahead and do that. That would be, so h is 2 root well, let me, let's come over here so we can simplify. H is equal to 2 root R squared minus, and then it would be R squared times 5 plus root 5 over 10. So this would be 2, and then you factor out an R squared, so 1 minus 5 root 5 over 10. Okay, so h 
is 2r square root of 1 minus, that's 5 plus root 5. Then 5 plus root 5 over 10. Okay, let me, I can, it's hard to see that. Okay. Now the area, the corresponding area is root 5 plus 1 pi r squared. Okay. There you go. That's the if you're inscribing a cell a right cylinder in a sphere that has radius r, this is going to be the the largest the the, the cylinder you're going to want to inscribe is going to have radius of the heads equal to this, height equal to this, and then the corresponding surface area is going to be equal to this. That's, that's going to be the largest possible surface area. All right, an oil refinery is located on the north bank of a straight river that is two kilometers wide. A pipeline is to be constructed from the refinery to storage tanks located on the south bank of the river six kilometers east of the refinery. The cost of laying pipe is $400,000 per kilometer over land to a point P on the north bank and $800,000 per kilometer under the river to the tanks. To minimize the cost of the pipeline, where should P be located? All right, so we're trying to minimize the cost. But we need it. Let's get a diagram first here. So it's the, the oil refinery is located on the north bank of a straight river that is two kilometers wide. The north bank. All right. So we've got a a river that is two kilometers wide. OK, so. There's the river. Then you've got the oil refinery here. And then the pipeline is disrupted to, or no, this is, yeah, to store, oh, to storage tanks. Okay, so then you've got the, on the, this is the north bank. So on the south bank, you've got the storage tanks located on this, you know, this plot of land here. All right, the river is two kilometers wide, and the 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 storage tanks are on the south bank, six kilometers east of the refinery. So, you know, it's like this here is six kilometers okay the cost of laying pipe is four hundred thousand dollars per kilometer over land to a point p on the north bank and eight hundred thousand dollars per kilometer under the river to the tanks okay so the idea is if we let's change to another color here so what they're saying is you're going to choose a point p here Okay, this point P is located, we'll say X, all right? And then from this point P, you're going to go under the river to the refinery. Let's call this distance Y, okay? And, and so you could either have X be 6, and so Y is 2, or you could have X be zero, and then Y is, you know, the hypotenuse length of the right triangle with legs six and two. That's the idea, okay? And so the cost, the cost is going to be what? The cost of laying the pipe is going to be what? It's going to be 400,000 X plus 800,000 Y. That's the cost. This is what we're trying to minimize. But we need to 
express this as a function of a single variable, so we need to relate x and y. How do we relate x and y? Okay, well, we could do this. So, this is 6 minus x, okay, and then this is 2. Right. I mean, it's kind of right. This, we're assuming that, that the refinery and, and the storage are right on the banks of the river. So, OK, so this is a right triangle. So we've got the, the Pythagorean theorem. Two squared is four plus six minus X squared is equal to Y squared. All right. So Y is equal to we got six minus X squared plus 4, just the square root. And we're not going to put plus or minus because y can't be negative. Okay, so c as a function of x is as shown here, and x can be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 6. Okay, so this is going to be continuous everywhere along this interval. And it's a closed interval, so let's just use the closed interval method again. So 400,000 times x plus 800,000 times square root of... 6 minus x squared plus 4. We want to store this as e. Okay, now let's evaluate e at the endpoint. So x is equal to 0. Oh, wait. So, okay, e evaluated at x is equal to 0. Okay, what is this? This is, okay, so 50596, zero, 0, So this is 5 million nine. 59,600. Okay, now C evaluated at 6. Is 4 million. All right, now we just need to evaluate the function at the critical points. So E... Or no, the... Take the derivative with respect to x. Okay, now solve for when this is equal to 0 for x. So if x is equal to, and let's just get this approximately here. 4.85, so x is equal to 4.85, and then what is that if we evaluate the function at that point with x is equal to this? And what is that? So c at x is equal to 4.85, is three seven eight five six zero zero okay so this is going to be the answer that's the minimum cost of all the possible options for x x can be between zero and six so that's the all that's that's the entire scenario you either make x is equal to 0, x is equal to 6, or you do somewhere in between. That's going to determine the length of pipe and whatnot, like the length of underwater pipe and the length of land pipe. If you make x is equal to 4.85 kilometers, 
in which case, so 6 minus 4.85. squared plus 4, 2.31. So y is equal to 2.31 kilometers. x is equal to 4.85 kilometers. So, so you would come 4.85 and then go straight across. So it's greater than 2, right? You're not going straight. It's, it, if x was equal to 6, then y would be equal to 2. You're at 4.85, then you come, you, do, you come here. y is 2.31, then the cost is going to be 3,705,600, and that's the minimum cost.